Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play AGEOD's Civil War. I'll do one more turn before I go to bed, see maybe if we can't finish this game off. Um, one more turn, one more video before I go to bed. Yeah, you can see I'm a little tired. Excuse the screen jumping around. My cat is bothering me again. He's nudging my mouse hand. So, All right, let's jump into it. Uh, enough rambling. Uh, I'm going to let my victorious armies around per Petersburg rest for a while. One of them is building a depot there. And I'm going to have Keys start moving off towards Norfolk. Uh, moving west, I'll have both my core, who are both luckily still active, continue to chase this guy here. Hopefully we can finish him off. Meanwhile, I'm uh, moving uh, Grant and Franklin's core here down out of northern Kentucky to where they'll be more useful. I'm moving Grant to Fort Henry and Donaldson, where so that could be sort of his command post, and I'm moving Franklin to defend Nashville. That frees up, oh dang cat, all right. That frees up Thomas, so I'm going to move him over here to join Pope and hopefully threaten the Memphis Corinth area. That's my goal for over there. Down here in the south, um, Grierson's covering our rear while Hooker is going to go ahead and take New Orleans. There's not much left inside. And I'm going to have Tyler chase this army over here, see if we can't get ourselves a decisive battle there. Uh, yeah, that's what's going on. I, by the way, I think a couple videos ago I said that Runyon would end up being our core commander, but it ends up that Tyler was uh, promotable too. So you'll see Runyon's a two-star, but Tyler is a more senior two-star, I believe. Anyway, doesn't matter. Tyler is running my uh, core because he got promoted too. And uh, there's poor Lion. Never managed to get up to two star yet. All right, let me pause it. See what happens. Okay, so Sherman managed to ca catch Polk's force uh, here in Ohio and uh, killed 2,400 men with only 500 casualties. So we didn't manage to destroy it, but uh, we did some damage. That's good. We'll see what else is going on. Okay, guys, so next turn. Uh, here in the east, I had Keys starting to move towards Nor Norfolk, but this appeared. Uh, it's a large stack under Braxton Bragg, and it looks to be mostly a lot of independent brigades. I don't understand why the AI does this. Uh, but there are, let's see, four nice strong divisions in there. So this... I don't know what the overall power of this stack is, but it's easily over 2,000. So uh, I'm not quite sure what to do right now. I might take Hamilton, for instance, and just move him down one uh, uh, one region in preparation for taking Garrysburg. If we could take Garrysburg, then there aren't really any Confederate railroads left heading towards this region where Bragg is. That might be a good thing for us to do. Uh, meanwhile, I'll sort of play a defensive game. Maybe Bragg's going to attack us. We'll find out. Uh, let's see. In Kentucky, here in eastern Kentucky, uh, I'm moving Whipple down to Ireton to fix the railroad there. Uh, Polk retreated this far, and uh, we'll see if he can use a retreat further or something like that. And I'm going to have Sherman move back to Cincinnati real quick. Maybe I'll have him move through Kentucky down into Tennessee. Maybe I'll have him retake Evansville here from this small uh, Confederate force. I don't know. Um, so down here in uh, Tennessee, we're still defending Nashville. Uh, I'm moving Grant over here to Humboldt to sort of defend Humboldt while I have these two core. One will go down towards Corinth, and the other is going to head this way and take Memphis. That's the plan. Finally, down here in the south, I have absolutely no idea what happened. Um, I told Hooker to assault New Orleans, and he didn't. I told Tyler to attack over here, and he didn't, and didn't move. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Um, so I'm going to have them both assault New Orleans this turn and hope we take it. They're both having supply problems. If we can take New Orleans, those supply problems will immediately go away. Uh, well, we need to do it. I don't know why they ignored my orders. I couldn't find a message about either of those units uh, from last turn. So I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, those are my orders for this turn. Let me pause it. 
and uh, see what happens next. Okay, New Orleans is ours again. Uh, my, my guys finally decided to uh, go ahead and assault. It looks like we took out all the defenders, just about. So uh, that's good. Let's see what else happened. Okay, that was it for that inner turn. Let's start down here in the south. I'm going to give Hooker a break in New Orleans, and I'll have Tyler come back uh, and retake Springfield, where Grierson got pushed out. Uh, on a nice note, look who earned himself a promotion last turn, Nathaniel Lyon. So uh, we'll promote him and have him independently move to Springfield. Um, maybe he'll take command of that core uh, next turn. It looks like uh, John Bell Hood is walking around. I don't know what he's doing. So that's what's going on there. Uh, here in Tennessee, going to move down and take Corinth next turn. They have uh, some decent troops in defense, but I think Thomas should be able to take care of that pretty easily. Uh, I'm not quite sure what to do with Sherman, so I'm sending here him here to Vincennes to fix that railroad, and then I'll try to, I think, clean up these units that are wandering around in this area. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, Whipple's going to fix the rail network there in, Ir in Ironton. I didn't mean to. There we go. Well, I haven't fixed the rails. I didn't mean to move them into city there. Oh, uh, what else is going on? Ah, yes, here in the east, there's the large uh, stack. Now it's under Pemberton. Uh, Crittenden is the one this turn who is active, so I'm going to have him come down and assault Garysburg. I'm moving Hamilton back to Petersburg to defend there. Should probably railroad him to make sure he gets there quickly. So, uh, yeah, that's what's going on here in the east. I think that's it. There is one game mechanic that I never went over uh, to this point in the game. And maybe I should do that now. Well, let's leave it like that. Um, that there's this thing called industrialization, where you can go ahead in all these areas and uh, spend resources. And by spending resources, maybe something like that. Let's see. Ah, oh, Kentucky too. Uh, so I just spent a whole lot of resources. You can, and this I'll be spending resources every turn in order to do this. And by uh, spending resources to industrialize the states, these states that will go ahead and uh, maybe increase the amount of supply they produce each turn, the amount of ammunition they produce each turn, maybe the amount of war supplies they produce each turn. Um, it's random, so next turn there's a chance that uh, we won't get any gains at all, but probably what we'll see are some messages that in some towns uh, a factory has been built or this and that, and uh, therefore has increased their their uh, production capacity. So uh, let me industrialize like this for now. Uh, I'm down to $700,000 left, which is still a lot of money. Uh, and I'll be able to raise more in a couple turns by issuing bonds and stuff again. So yeah, that's what's going on there. Looks like I should buy some more. There we go, some more railroad points. And I think that's it for this turn. So let me do the inner turn, and I'll let you know what happens. All right, so uh, Thomas had a really good victory here at Corinth. We lost a thousand, you know, fourteen hundred men. They lost forty-five hundred men, so that's real good. Hopefully, this means Corinth is ours now. Um, maybe there'll be another little battle. We'll find out. Here, let's find out. All right, Garrysburg is also ours. We uh, took out all the defenders there with very little loss, so that's good. Let's see what else is going on. Okay, here we are on the next turn. Uh, here in the east, I have had a, have a lot of active generals around here. Crittenden's active too, but I'm going to leave him in Garrysburg. With this large stack, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack him with both Keys and Hamilton. Um, we have you know a lot more men than stuff than him, and I think we're much better organized than he is. But still, I think this unit has been here for a turn or two and has dug in a little bit. Uh, I'm also moving Rosecrans and his army with, you know, he has four divisions here. I'm moving him down to Petersburg, uh, and I'm railroading him. So he should be there in two turns, 
two days, excuse me, uh, and he may be able to march to the sound of the guns. So we may be attacking this guy with as many as 12 divisions. Hopefully this works out well for me. We'll find out in a sec. Uh, not much going on in Kentucky. I'm having Sherman take Evansville back. Uh, Corinth is ours. I'm having Pope start to move towards Memphis. Uh, Corinth is still a depot. That's nice. Um, and then down here in the New Orleans area, Lyons, with his uh, new promotion, is now in charge of this core, which is good for me because as a two-star, he is a 5-2-2 general. Uh, it's not bad. And Hooker, who I just had rest for a turn, I'm going to send him off to see if we can't uh, fight and take out that unit. And who knows, maybe we can continue to move and uh, try to take out that guy. Lion, after resting for a turn, I think I'm going to send him to Baton Rouge and try to take care of this large stack. Uh, we'll see if he can pull that off. He's a power of 2,500. So hopefully that's enough. All right, I'll pause it, do the inner turn, and we'll find out what happens. So cool, a huge battle in Virginia. It looks like uh, our army commander, Rosecrans, actually did march to the sound of the guns. I watched him do it um, as the battle was going on. So our 70,000 men went up against their 97,000 men. We took 13,000 casualties. They took 20,000 casualties. Uh, and it looks like they had a series of units get destroyed. We took a whole lot of prisoners. Um, we each had 23 units routed. So uh, that looks like really good news to me. Uh, I don't know what the state of their army is going to be after that. But it looks like we'll have some recovering to do. But... Uh, We'll still be in good shape. I think we did a lot more damage than we took there. So that was great news. Uh, let me pause it see what else happens. So I wasn't even going to show you this, but uh, it ends up that in Evansville, um, where Sherman was attacking, they had a lot more men than I figured they did. They had 4,000 men. Uh, Sherman managed to take the town, which only 300 lost. A whole lot of prisoners taken again. So that's good news. I'm sort of surprised at how big of a garrison they had there. All right, pause it again, and we'll see what else happened. Well, God bless Sherman's little heart, huh? Uh, looks like Albert Sidney Johnston brought his force up um, to Evansville just after Sherman took it. And uh, Johnston assaulted Sherman, I guess, and uh, we destroyed him. He lost everybody down to a man. We took a whole lot of prisoners again. Uh, so that's really good news. You can see that they lost a lot on the assault. Uh, I don't really know who was attacking who. Let's see. It looks like we were attacking them. Oh, they were on an offensive posture and we were on an assault posture. So we had basically attacked each other. Um, so, yeah. Go Sherman. This is really great news. Let's pause it see what else is going on. All right. And there it is. Looks like with those, vic those uh, victories on the battlefield, we've won the game. Uh... I don't know if I can close this window and go back and recap. Yeah, it looks like I can. So I think I'll make one more video recapping the state of the game at the end and uh, maybe some final thoughts. Uh, we're at the end of this video, however. I'm out of time. So I'll just say thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the last video.